Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna cover parenting objects. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. I've already done so, but you can go up to your file menu and pick the option for new, general, and then if it asks you to save it, you don't need to save the file you've been working on. And in, in this file and in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at something known as parenting. So we have a cube, we have our default cube here. Let's add another mesh, hold down shift and then press A on your keyboard. And under mesh, let's add a cone. Now we have two objects here. The cone is sort of hidden inside the cube here, but for just a moment, let's remember we have two objects and up in the outliner, we can see those two objects. We have the cone and we have the cube, the camera and the light we're ignoring. Now, although these are two totally different objects, a cube is quite different than a cone. Perhaps we think of these as needing to be joined together in some fashion. So let's take a look at what parenting will do for us in regards to joining these two objects together. And when I say join, I'm not talking about a merging of the vertices, edges, or faces. I'm just talking about an idea like grouping is in other software. There might be a way that you want to keep these two related to one another. So the cone is pre-selected in the right hand lower panel here, your object properties panel. Notice that we have the transform settings are open here, but just beneath it, we have a relations menu. Go ahead and click on relations to drop that down. And you'll see here, it says parent. If you click in this blank space here, it will give you a list of the other objects other than the cone that are in this scene. So we have the camera, the light, the cube. Let's select the cube. So what we've done here is we've made the cube the parent of the cone. Now, let's look up in the outliner. Notice that the cone seems to have disappeared from our list. But you'll notice here with the cube, there's this extra little symbol on the right. So if you click to twirl down next to the cube, the cone has now been filed within the cube. So the cone is the child and the cube is the parent. So what does that mean in practical terms? Or at least when we're looking in our 3D scene, how is this going to behave? Well, the cone is selected right now, so go ahead and press G for grab. Then press Z for the Z direction, and then move your cursor up to float this up above and click to set it down. Now, let's say we thought that this cone needs to always be resting right on top of this cube. Let's go ahead and move it one more time, but let's turn on snapping. So go up and click on the snap icon and then just to the right, click on the drop down and pick face. Then press G for grab, press Z to lock the Z direction and put your cursor on the face of the cube and click and it will have snapped it to that face. Okay, so after parenting the cone to the cube such that the cube is the parent and the cone is the child, we were able to move the cone around freely and we noticed nothing else changed about our scene. But now that was when we were manipulating the child in that relationship. Now select the cube and let's see what happens when we move it. Press G for grab and then move it around and notice that the cone comes along with it. You can go ahead and click to set that down. It turns out this works for all transformations. So press R for rotate and you'll notice the cone is going to rotate. You can click to set that down, press S for scale and you can scale them together. Go ahead and click to finish that. Now at any time, you can click on the cone to select it and any scale, so S for scale, click to set that back down, R for rotate, click to set that back down, G for grab or move, click to set that down. So anything you do to the child, you're only doing to the child. Anything you do to the parent is going to also trickle down and affect the child. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. 
That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Now this works with more than just two objects, so let's add another object. Hold down Shift and press A, and then under Mesh, go ahead and pick Torus. You notice the Torus ends up here in your collection in the outliner. And it's pre-selected, so down in the relations area, you see it has no parent. Go ahead and click inside of there. And you can choose either the cube or the cone. Let's go ahead and choose the cone. Notice that it jumped and did a bunch of different things there. So it's already taking on some of the different things that we've done to the cone. So now this is interesting. Go ahead and select the cube and guess before we do anything, guess what's going to happen to the cone and to the torus when we do something to the cube. So let's remember what we have here. We have the cube at the uppermost level. We have the cone as a child of the cube, but if we twirl down cone, we now have the torus as a child of the cone. So predict in your mind what's going to happen, then press G for grab and move this around and everything comes along with it. Same would be true of rotate. So I pressed R click to set that down and S for scale and then click to set that down. Now click on the cone and predict what do you think will happen here when we do something to the cone? What will happen to the cube and what will happen to the torus? So let's try it. G for grab. So now nothing happens to the cube, but the torus is a child still of the cone. So it's moving around. And if you click on just the torus, you might imagine that nothing will happen to anything but the torus here. So you move it around and then set it down. You could almost think of this at this point, if you wanna take the family metaphor to the extreme, the cube's the grandfather, the cone is the parent, the torus is the child slash grandchild. And so you have this relationship where anything you do to the cube affects everything underneath it. Everything you do to the cone only affects what's underneath it, not what's above and so on. Now with the torus selected, you could switch and click where it says cone and switch it to cube. You notice it switches where the torus is at in the hierarchy here. So if I twirl this down, now they're both parented to the cube. You notice also it immediately switched some details about the torus's transformations. It can be an interesting thing when you parent after doing a few things, stuff can jump around and retransform itself a bit. And that can be a little confusing when you're new to Blender but just know that it has to do with it's no longer taking on some of the things that it gathered from the cone. It got rid of that stuff because it no longer needs to hang on to it because the cone is no longer the parent. Okay, let's review what we've done so far. So we can have one object be the parent of another. We can have nested parenting where one object is a parent of one thing and then that object is a parent to another. And we see in this case that we can have two objects and you could imagine many, many more can share the same parent. So in this case, the torus and the cone are both children to the cube. Now there's one last situation to discuss. There are going to be times where you have multiple objects, but you don't think of any single object as being the parent and all the rest being the children. Instead, you think of them as equals. They're all on the same level but you do want them to behave together as a group, if you will. So here's how we handle that. First of all, let's get rid of any kind of parent-child relationship we have in this file. So here's one way to do it. Click on the cone, down in the relations tab, notice that there's a little X next to cube. Go ahead and click on the X. And now that cone no longer is the child of the cube. And the same with the torus here. Go ahead and click on whatever you can see of that torus and come down here and click on the X and it's no longer a child of the cube either. I'll twirl this cube menu up so that I can see the cone, the cube, and the torus are all now at the same level. Let's also move some things around so we can see better. So the torus is pre-selected for me. If it's not for you, you can select something else. We just want to move these three things side by side. So whatever you have selected, press G for grab, move it over to one side, then select something else. I'll select the cone, press G for grab, move it over to the other side. 
Now I'm not too worried that some of the objects here are bigger or smaller, as long as I can clearly see three separate objects side by side. Okay, let's say that this is the relationship that these need to have relative to one another. So however I think of this model, the cone is always over here. It looks about like this. Then there's a cube, then there's a torus, and that's how my model needs to look. But I may want to rotate these together or scale them together or move them together. But no single one of these should be the parent above the others. They're all just kind of on equal footing. Well, we're still going to use parenting, but we're going to add a new type of object. So hold down shift and press the letter A. And instead of the mesh category, we're going to go down and look where it says empty. And in the flyout menu, you see several different types of empty objects. Empty objects are things that are kind of like utilities that for different purposes, you'll want to add to your scene to help you control other things. And at first it's hard to understand why you would need so many different types of empty objects, much less to really fully comprehend what an empty object is for. So rather than us diving deep now, we will cover more of this in future lessons. Let's just add a plain axis and then we'll figure out pretty quickly how this can be useful in the context of parenting. So click on plain axis. Now it will add the empty object or the plane axes at the 3D cursor, but the cube's kind of in the way. So let's move the cube or whatever object you still have there. Click on it once to select it, press G for grab, and just move it a little bit away and then click to set it down. Now it's hard to see what this empty object is, but if you go over to the outliner and click on the word empty, you'll see empty axes. It's got something pointing up and down, something pointing along the Y and something pointing along the X axis. Now, because it's empty, although we can see something here in the context of our 3D modeling, there's essentially nothing there from a perspective of it's not like I've added another object, like a sphere or another cube or something else that will muddy things up visually for us. So we'll be able to use this empty object as the parent to all of these other mesh objects. And that will allow these mesh objects to behave somewhat like a group. So no single one of them will be the parent over the top of the others. They'll just all be on the same level, almost like they're in a group, but really they'll just all be children to the empty object. Now we could go through and click on each object and come down here and set the parent one by one, but I'll show you another way that we can do this. If you go up to your outliner, go ahead and click on cone to select it. Then hold down the control key and click on cube to add it to your selection set. And with the control key held down, click on Taurus to add it to the selection set. So we've selected three different items. Now you can let go of the control key, hold down the shift key, then click and hold down on one of the names you selected and drag it up to the word empty and let go. Then you can let go of the shift key. You'll notice you have a little object icon here with a little number three. That's a clue that inside of this empty object, you have three children objects and you can click to twirl this down and see that the cone, the cube and the torus are all now beneath this empty object. That's a clue that they've all become children or that the empty object is the parent to all of them. And you'll notice now too, that if you click once in space, then click on the torus, you'll notice down here, its parent is the empty. Click on cube, its parent is the empty, and you click on the cone and its parent is the empty. So it's just a faster way to quickly make this empty object the parent to each of these other objects here. And now what's cool is you can click on the empty object to select it and press G for grab and you can move it around. Click to set it down. R for rotate. Click to set that down. S for scale and click to set that down. And really, it's the same thing we were doing with parenting all along, but because you're using an empty object, you can think of it as a way to turn these into a group of sorts that you can manipulate together. All right, we've been covering this parenting concept in an abstract way, and it may not make perfect sense just yet, but go ahead and play around with this. Try adding some things, breaking the current relationships, creating new ones in terms of using parenting and just experimenting with how it works. 
And then when you feel comfortable, you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson where we'll talk about another key feature that you'll want to know about when working with multiple objects in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.